Hi, remember in the last video I told you about Touch Portal? It's a super powerful, fully customizable alternative to Elgato's Stream Deck. Today, I'm going to teach you how you can actually automate some parts of your stream, specifically the getting started side of it, so that it's just a one touch and your stream gets started and you've got all the time in the world just to get ready. All right, here we go. Before we get started with the tutorial, here's what you're going to need. OBS version 28 and the pro version of Touch Portal. Before we get making buttons and action flows and that sort of thing, I need to show you a quick feature in OBS Studio. Head up to File, then Settings, then Stream, and enable Bandwidth Test Mode. Here's what this does for you. You're going to be testing this a few times as you're going along with this tutorial. And what you don't want to be doing is just sending a bunch of random little streams off to your Twitch followers. This mode prevents any of your data from getting to Twitch, so it doesn't trigger a go live notification for your followers, but it still shows as streaming in OBS. This will help you understand that your buttons are working. Now let me show you an example of my go live button. It's a little chaotic, but I'll take you through it. First, we launch the Spotify application. Then we wait six seconds. Following that, we load the appropriate playlist. We enable shuffle. We toggle the play on, set the volume to 65. Next, we send a tweet with our custom going live message. We change the button's background to be red. We switch our OBS scene to the starting soon. And then we start OBS streaming to Twitch and we mute our microphone and our desktop audio. The reason we mute our desktop audio is because we don't want a doubling up of your Spotify music. OBS 28 features application audio capture, and that's the method I recommend you use to separate your audio from different sources. All right, let's make a simple button. In order for this to work, you're going to need the Spotify plugin. Click the link in the description to grab it. From your main touch portal window, click any blank space to create a new button. Give it an appropriate name, such as go live. Bump the text size up so you can read it properly and set it to the bottom of the button. I do this just out of preference. Next, give it an icon. And just so you can see how it looks, press save and the button's there. Now it doesn't currently do anything, but let's fix that. Double click the button to open it back up, head into run and open, find your Spotify executable in your app data folder. I'll put the address in the description. Next, we want to give Spotify a chance to load before it does anything. Open the logic tab and select wait for timer. Make sure you change the middle drop down to seconds and then put in something sensible. Let's say five seconds. Now we want to add the flow of actions for Spotify itself. Now it doesn't necessarily matter which order you do this in. So first we're going to set the volume to 65. Then we're going to load a playlist. Once again, link in description for copyright free music. And we're going to add the play feature. We're going to toggle on the play functionality. Now it's time to add the functionality for OBS. First, we're going to set the scene. We're going to change this to our starting soon screen. We're going to mute our microphone using the set source volume. And finally, we're going to set the streaming state to start. This is going to start sending our signal to Twitch. Now, quick thing to remember, we have bandwidth test mode on. So don't worry, you're not going to be streaming anything for now. Just don't forget to turn it off when you actually want to go live. Now, I'm going to press the button on my phone. And as you can see in here, we executed the commands that we scripted earlier. Yeah, quick note from uh, editing Dave. Turns out I'm a bit of an idiot and I didn't capture the main screen of OBS. So here's a freeze frame of the main OBS window. You can see down here that it says connecting. When you're properly streaming, what that'll do is it'll switch over to stop streaming. And that's how we know the whole thing's worked. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you do want more, please like, comment, subscribe, do all the YouTube things as usual. I'll see you in the next video.